Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for returning for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Dr. Martin Kolb. He's joining us here as an expert in interstitial lung disease from McMaster University to discuss Horizon Therapeutics Phase 2B pivotal trial to evaluate HZN825 to treat people with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, or IPF. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Kolb. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Neil. My pleasure to be here and uh, address this important study. Well, as an expert in interstitial lung disease, give us a bit of your professional background and talk about your role at McMaster University. So I I am uh, a physician, a clinician scientist uh, working at McMaster for almost 20 years. And um, I see a lot of patients with different types of fibrotic interstitial lung disease. Many of them would have idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, we have active research program at our institution with preclinical research, so testing novel compounds, exploring novel pathways that could be targeted, uh, and we are also actively recruiting patients into clinical trials. Yeah, so we were part of the <clears throat> internet trials and uh, some other trials that that are currently going on, and uh, of course we are always eager to offer advanced opportunities and novel therapies to our patients. Is IPF considered a rare disease? And if so, is there a huge unmet need for this community? It is. I always say it's one of the more common rare diseases. Mm -hmm. So by by numbers uh, in the whole population, it is it is a, a rare disease. It affects typically patients who are 60, 65 years and older. Within that patient group, it is uh, much more common. It wouldn't be a rare. Yeah, but overall, it is a rare disease. The problem with this disease is that the therapies, there are two therapies approved right now on the market. Um, they are very useful um, and they would slow disease progression, yeah, which means to your question about unmet medical need, disease progression will still occur despite these therapies mm. uh, and that calls for additional drugs, better drugs uh, to to meet the need. Talk about some of the, the symptoms, um, what causes it, and what is the typical diagnostic journey for a patient dealing with IPF? Symptoms are pretty unspecific at the beginning. So imagine you deal with a aging population group that is just at that age where you everyone thinks life goes slower breathing harder is just a matter of aging so that that is that is what makes it difficult so the symptoms are just breathlessness at exertion at first at just more strenuous exertion uh, it could be cough uh, sometimes it can be kind of chest discomfort chest tightness not really chest pain and uh, then obviously with more uh, disability through this breathing trouble, uh, the exertional breathlessness will be coming at, at very modest or even daily life activities such as going to the bathroom or taking a shower. Mm. The journey, therefore, is often delayed if uh, physicians don't consider it because it's so unspecific. So I a patient presenting with that um, at the age of, let's say, 70 years, Mm -hmm. a physician would typically not consider IPF as the first possibility to explain that problem. Of course, uh, heart failure, COPD, just deconditioning. There are numerous other things that are more common. But I always tell the physicians that if you treat something with a common approach, and it doesn't help within the next three to six months, think about rare diseases such as IPF as well. Mm. One thing that a physician might find quite uh, useful is to listen to the chest, because a lot of these patients with IPF have uh, crackles, so crackling sound on on chest exam uh, with a stethoscope, so this is very coarse. Whoever have heard it once, they will always hear it and listen to it and recognize it. It's called Velcro crackles. It's literally the same coarse sound that you get when you just open and close a Velcro zipper. Tell us a bit about this trial, HZN-825. What is that compound? And give us a bit of insight into the phase two trial design. 
so this compound targets lysophosphatidic acid <laughs> signaling pathway. Uh, so the L LPA, or it's, it's an LPAR antagonist, and it is a, a crucial pathway that uh, that coordinates uh, uh, wound repair, so epithelial cell damage and uh, repair of that fibroblast recruitment and creating some scarring. Uh, affecting vascular leakage, so all very important biological elements that would occur in fibrotic disorders. So it is, an, it is a novel approach, uh, which is in a way complementary or uh, substitutional to existing therapies because it's not the same biological pathway. It's an oral compound, which is always liked by patients. The design would be a 52-week uh, study with uh, targeting patients with IPF. We want ideally patients who are not on background therapy. Mm. Uh, that would give you a, a better signal. That means that a lot of patients who do not tolerate existing therapies or who do not want to take existing therapies or who have failed when they use existing therapies and they would be then uh, tested versus placebo. So, it, so it, it uh, should have uh, a big enough window uh, to show the efficacy of this approach. Give us some uh, insight into maybe some of the results. Well, I mean, so far the the studies that were done in humans, uh, I mean, they were small. They were just designed to show safety rather than efficacy. So oh. I I always refrain from thinking too much into efficacy signals. Of course, everyone wants to see an efficacy signal in a small study, but we know that we need larger studies such as this one that is now uh, uh, ongoing and started to recruit. So I think that pathway is certainly a central pathway, so it is a very promising one. Uh, it has been targeted before with some side effects of compounds that have not been seen at all with this approach here because it's a more specific targeting of a receptor. So these, the, um, I think the feeling is that this will be a very safe, nicely uh, uh, tolerated drug. Yeah, but I, I think this is a well-designed study and Horizon is a, is a very supportive uh, partner to develop this program. And I'm looking forward to see positive results and I'm optimistic. Well, I appreciate your time with us here on Health Professional Radio with Dr. Kolb. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Pleasure to be with you. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Martin Kolb. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.